The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the January 3rd, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us, should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, but you've got a question, send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. Inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. A sea of red out there. All the U.S. indices that we track are trading to the downside. Dow's off 242. Uh, S&P's 29, 121 for the NASDAQ, 143 for the Russell. Semi's off 72. Trend is down to 10. Gold's off 31 bucks, testing support. Uh, I, I saw uh, uh, silver is off 20, uh, 75 cents. since well below support. Lights recruit found support and is trading higher, up two dollars and thirty cents. Natural gas up nine cents. Thirty treasury off seventeen ticks. She's trading out at one twenty three oh nine. Leading the charge dollar wise, the upside. You've got Eli Lilly up eighteen dollars and change. Regenerate up sixteen and change. Northrop Grumman about nine. Lockheed Martin up five. Everest Group up five. To the downside, it's Booking Holdings, forty one dollar move, a little over one percent. MicroStrategy thirty seven bucks five percent. Monolithic Power Systems, 3% or 19 bucks. Broadcom down 19. Waters Corp down 17 and change. That's a 5% move for it. So we've got movers and we've got shakers, but everybody wants to know what are the markets doing? Well, at this stage of the game, we've got a change in trend signal out here. Let's go take a look at what's going on by looking at the daily and weekly time frame. So we're going to switch our panels. We're going to go take a look at the uh, at the four equity future contracts, with our primary focus really being on the NQ. But here, if we take a look at the ES Mini, a close today below 47.82 suggests that we have a change in trend. After we came off of the bottom down here with that Rose Mintum indicator, TD9 count bottom pattern on October 27th, we've never seen price close below the bottom of a profile. If we do that, that's our first change in trend signal. Now, I did mention earlier, if you caught the 11 a.m. update, that the spot volatilix is testing its 50 day exponential moving average that level specifically right now so you're going to kind of put both of these together the 1388 is the uh, uh, is the uh, spot volatilix 50-day uh, exponential moving average if the spot fix closes above that and then the es mini closes below profile support out there you've got a really good change in trend signal however and the however is that may be only telling us that price is going to get back to support, the next level of support. So one of the things that you and I do here, it's really important. One, we, we try to identify patterns that are associated with tops and bottoms. So that's one of the things that we do with the tools that we have. Another thing that we do with these tools is identify support and resistance levels. That's really important. As you know, I take a look at multi time frame charts. Why? Because you go from one time frame to the next, like the daily, we go take a look at all right, if you're busting through daily support, where's the weekly support level? Well, in the case of the ES Mini, that's at the 40, 4693 area. Now, that number is going to change. That's the oscillator and change line. The oscillator and change line is a difference between the 19 and 39 period exponential moving average of the price oscillator. 
Let's not go into all the technical details. Let's instead, let's go take a look at the NQ. If you'd like to know that, I'd love to teach it to you. You subscribe to Mastery and Probability. It's a workshop that'll teach you those exact details. In the case of the NQ, which is the weak link out here right now, it's not the uh, Russell, it is the NQ, although the Russell's getting fairly weak. But in the case of the NQ, closed below the bottom of its daily profile yesterday. By the way, that bottom profile is 16,880. It's trading below it right now, or 16,839, either one. Uh, those two profiles. We had different profiles for the black background system and the white background system. But now when you break through profiles, again, you have to understand where support is. Well, you don't have to. I'm suggesting that that's a good thing to do. And support here, as we can see, is the oscillator and change line for the weekly time frame. Now, I don't have enough data, unfortunately. I've got to have the continuous contract up, whereas in the March, con whereas in the ES Mini, I was able to get enough data for the March contract out there. But we're still in right about that exact same spot out here. So this is a suggestion that prices at a support area and we could see a bounce we'd have to go take a look at intraday charts to see if there's some kind of bottoming signals there but we, before we go to any intraday charts out here for the nq what we can look at is today is likely going to become bar number four of consecutive moves lower out here again it's a march contract so we don't have a ton of data i could put up a continuous one right here all that i want to really be able to share with you as we can see a couple of four day consecutive moves lower each of those here have led to at least a one-day rally. The first one was back on, a, on August the 7th. The next four-day consecutive move we had was on August 18th. We had really more than a one-day rally out there. We had an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside that had formed. If we take a look at the next one that came in, that was on the trading session of October 20th. We had a two-bar rally out there. And then uh, that's it. So today is going to become bar number four. So we've got bar number four that's taking place while the NQ is testing its oscillator and change line level of support. Now, if it fails, that's the oscillator and change line, then we're looking at a move back towards the 16,336 level, the top of that. And really, a counter trend move would find support at about the 15,937 area. That's the center of its bear structured profile. But one thing at a time right now, and that one thing is that the weak link out here is back to a level of support. The Dow has been strong like bull. Now, today, it, it looks like we'll get a bearish engulfing candle that'll confirm a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Prices trading with inside the profile levels there. So nothing broken inside the Dow. That changes if the Dow closes below the bottom of its profile. And that number is 37,607. In the case of the Russell 2000, it does have a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. It has a four river evening star candle formation. It is a bearish reversal candle. Price is testing support. Now, this is a bullish structure support level. The bottom, which is 2,990 out there, we're trading just below there. We're about five bucks below that as we speak right now. Again, if these levels get broken, if price on the daily basis closes below the bottom of those profiles, what your eyes need to or should look at is the oscillator and change lines for the weekly time frames. In the case of the Dow, by the way, it's down right now at about 36,623, the Russell 1912. And again, the ES Mini about 46.93 out there. So that's the first thing that we know. By the way, the ES Mini, this is four consecutive days to its downside as well. So much like the NQ, you got to expect or anticipate a bounce. Now, you really expect that after what we've taken a look at. If that spot volatility closes back below the 50-day exponential moving average, again, that's printed at 13.88. The spot VIX right now, 13.90. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. 
for daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So to follow along with that first segment, and that first segment, what we identified, we've got four consecutive days of downside inside the ES and the NQ. We can see that that typically has resulted in at least a one-day rally out there. Um, we also know that the spot politics for the S&P 500, for the ES Mini, is testing a level of potential resistance. That's a 50-day exponential moving average out there. And here, if we take a look at the – and so this is suggesting at least a one-day bounce, right? So if we try to find a seasonal chart pattern that the markets may be following, obviously we're only two days into the year. Well, the one that we know that we have and what I'm showing right now is the uh, Dow Jones – over 127 years, I'm showing its election seasonal cycle. And that's what we're in right now. Now, interestingly enough, again, I don't know if this is just coincidence. There are no coincidences in life. Is typically uh, the beginning of the year, we see a move lower inside of the Dow during this time period. Now, this has got a total of 32 touch points out here. So there's 32 presidential elections that make up this cycle. So it's a pretty decent cycle. If I put up the S&P 500, we have far less out there, and the NASDAQ even fewer. So we're going to use, from a market perspective, we're going to go ahead and use the, certainly the Dow as to what equity markets are likely to do. So here, this typically forms a bottom right around January 3rd, January 4th. Today is January 3rd. Falls right in line with what we were just talking about. Then this suggests that we get a rally, and that rally here that would take us up into the 8th. So today is the 3rd. Let me just look at my calendar here. Not that I'm very good at adding and subtracting. The 8th would be Monday out there. And this goes along the line with the first question that came in was from an individual called KK. And the question was, on my nine panel chart, is it time to short each and every one of those? And then the following question was, which is the weakest out here? So first, with regard to the equity markets, I would not tell anybody to short based upon what we've done here, to short the markets now, today. 
Instead, what I would say is if you're going to go ahead and get short, why don't you see if we get that one day bounce and then just simply go ahead and sell it irrespective of everything else out there. It may still be a little bit early knowing that seasonally speaking, we might get a rally that lasts three or four sessions out there. But if that's what you're looking for, today is not the day, even though we've got those change in trend signals out there for the daily time frame for the ES and for the NQ out there. So that's my recommendation. As we take a look at this nine panel chart out here, uh, if in fact the spot follow today holds its 50 day exponential move in, average 1388 and you're a day trader, then look to go ahead and trade that for one day uh, to the downside. Uh, if, you, uh, if you want to short the US dollar index and wait to see if in fact it holds 102.26, that's the top of its profile. If it does, that's potentially a shortable instrument. Gold, you wouldn't short. Gold right now is testing support at 2041. Silver, I wouldn't uh, short out here because I'd be paying attention to what's going on with the U.S. dollar index out there. Light speed crude, the buy, this is not a shortable thing. You would not have shorted as price was testing support, which was the bottom of its profile at 7014. That more likely was a buy. You wouldn't short the uh, natural gas is trading above resistance levels and it wants to go target the next resistance area. That's a 281. And I wouldn't be shorting the Treasury when price is trading back into the buy zone of its bullish structured profile. That's between one. 22.15 and 123.02. So sorry to give you another overview of the nine panel charts out there, but there was a question that came in. I answer or certainly try to answer all questions. So speaking of questions, let's go take a look at the questions that have come in. And for this, we're going to go ahead and change our screens. We're going to go change over to the white background screens. We're going to take a look at Bank of America. And that's for Duncan Steve inside the Tiger's Den. Here we've got our three panel charts out there. And Duncan, what we have is nothing more than good old fashioned consolidation with inside its daily profile. And that profile level of support is at 33.16 and resistance up at 33.99. On a weekly basis, this is going to go ahead and complete a TD nine count top this week. It is the high of this week that is what was needed uh, because we had to, well, let me just make sure of that. Price had to spike above 3407 this week. What did we get to yesterday? 3407. Actually, hmm, how is Stevie going to do that one out there on the bar following? Stevie's going to have to think about that. So what we're going to do, Duncan Steve and Stevie Perseverance Roads, is we're just going to focus on the daily time frame chart at this stage here. If we get a close below the bottom of that profile, that's at 33.16. Price is likely to get back and test this gap to the upside at least. And that high out there is at 32.13. So close below 33.16 gets you at least $1 lower out there. What else can I share with Steve-O on Bank of America? Not much. I don't have anything else. I hope it was Bank of America that you were looking at. It, maybe it was Boeing. Sometimes I, I, I tend to screw those up out there. But all I see right now on the daily basis is a consolidation with insider profile. So, Duncan, I do hope that helps you out or anybody that was asking about uh, Bank of America. Nancy, who loves Microsoft, day trades Microsoft, is asking if we could go take a look at it. When we take a look at Microsoft, what we know out here is we have a consolidation pattern, and that's been set up by the daily time frame charts. And that is its rectangular so uh, rectangle uh, rec uh, uh, consolidations, you want to maybe sell from the top of the consolidation, buy from the bottom of the consolidation. We're pretty much at midstream right here. So you got neither uh, from a daily perspective that gives you much of an advantage. Maybe it's a little bit below midstream out there. So perhaps this is telling us that price is going to go target, you know, the profile support level, its breakout area, somewhere between 365 16 and 367 even Steven. But if you're a day trader, what I did do, Nancy, is I spent a little bit of time trying to identify what time frame is providing you with the best signals. Now, sometimes these signals will end up going away, but it is the 10 minute time frame chart that is providing you with the best information for day trading Microsoft. What Stevie means about that is we come all the way back here. Back here, by the way, is just simply the trading session at 10 o'clock in the morning back on December 29th out there. That triggered a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. That signal was then confirmed with the bear sash candle at 1020. That high is held up. What price then did, Nancy, is it moved down. It created a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. It did that at 1240 in the afternoon on December the 29th. That led to a rally towards its TD9 count breakdown level at 377.11. Now, at this stage here, we did not get a topping pattern. 
We don't always get them. But again, we've gotten two, a nice top and a nice bottom. You know, and where the, the day trade sets up, you take it. If it doesn't set up, you, you don't take it. Or maybe you do and you look at some other tool out there. Turns out that as price move lower out here, and that price moving lower, this is on the trading day of uh, January the 2nd. If we come back out here and take a look at January 2nd and put that together with, that uh, was yesterday, put that together with the Microsoft chart, price was pulling back and found support at that bullish structured profile zone. So that, you know, you kind of put two things together. You always want to understand what's going on in the daily time frame. Um, I think you want to understand what's going on in multiple time frames. Well, turns out that in the case of Microsoft on a 10-minute basis, Nancy, went ahead and formed both a TD9 count top and a sell the D point top. And it did that at the trading time frame of 10.10 10 this morning. And now what price is doing, it's pulling back. It's testing that first key level of support. Now, that level of support is green. So in a green oscillator and change line, when it changes from red to green, if price is able to hold that level, that's actually a buy point. Would I suggest that you buy that based upon everything else that we have going on here? You make that decision. I'm not going to make that decision for you out here. But if price does close below that level, you'd be looking for its next bottoming pattern. In the case of Microsoft, short of some pattern forming out here, I don't have anything. I would say that next bottoming pattern would be at about 368.51. But I'm not saying that, Nancy, at 1126 because price is still above that green oscillator and change line. Look at the 10-minute chart. I think that's providing you with the best intraday signals from Microsoft. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Com. 
Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. We've got the charts for uh, Bank of Montreal up on our screen. We've got the daily, weekly, and monthly. This is for Joe D out here. And, Joe, what we've got is uh, we've got really a gigantic A to B equals CD to the upside. So the A to B point started from the bottom of its TD9 count, went right up here to what's marked as a wave number four. That's letter D. And you can see it was quite the expansion. If we just simply move that over to the C point. So that expansion level. Actually, so you had a, a sell the D point pattern that formed on December 20th. That uh, was negated uh, two days later. And then that formed a TD9 count top on December 26th. That got negated the next day. But we did get a bear sash candle, and that was on December 28th. And that confirmed the 1 to 2.618 uh, uh, A to B equals CD to the upside out there. What took place yesterday is price pulled back and tested support. That was the bottom of its profile at 97.88. Today you're trading below that, Joe. So that suggests to you and I that there's a change of trend going on inside of Bank of Montreal. So where's that going to take us to? Well, on the daily time frame chart, the next level of support for it until new profiles form is down at 87.12. Is that likely? Is that a possibility? It absolutely is a possibility because when we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, which does not have a topping pattern, so it's really being driven by the daily, is if price does continue to move lower, well, its area of support is that oscillator and change line, 87.95, and of course that number is going to change. The next area of potential support uh, on this set of charts out here would be down at 92.28. 90 to 28 is the top of its daily profile out there. Oh, it's that daily top of the monthly profile. So Bank of Montreal generated a change in trends or generated a change in trend signal today, generated to sell the D point pattern a couple of days ago. It looks like this wants to pull back further. Now, this is only going to be day number two to the downside out here. Consecutive days, that is. So as we take a look at that or should be just depends on how the close is. And if we take a look at this, uh, we can see we've had since the bottom, we've had one three-day pullback, another three-day pullback, and then a two-day pullback out here. So this is still, it, although it's got a change in trend signal out here, Joe, I don't want to get completely married to that um, until we see how many consecutive days we get to the downside. Uh, if it's three or less out there, this thing is still very bullish out here. And um, maybe there's a new profile or some pattern that would form on an intraday basis to assist us. But right now, uh, let's go with the signal that the uh, uh, technical tools are providing to you and I. And that is that if we close below 97.88, we have a change in trend. And that suggests we've got a fairly decent pullback. And the only thing that gets in the way of that pullback is just simply the Texas two or three step out there. Today being the Texas two step with two consecutive days to the downside. So, Joe, I hope that provided you with the information you were looking for. Now we're going to go. We'll take a look at a few stocks that Jimmy D inside the Tiger's Den wanted to look at. The first one is ENVX. And ENVX is going to go ahead and form a TD9 count bottom today. That pattern will complete tomorrow out there. Uh, if we look at the weekly time frame chart, the weekly time frame chart has a TD9 count top. Now, what you don't like here, of course, the week is not over, is that price is trading below a red oscillator and change line. If price closes the week, not on Wednesday, but if price closes on Friday below 12.04, that signals a move back to the 9.03, 9.73, maybe even 8.33 out there. But if that's going to unfold, then what we know is that the TD9 count bottom will fail. Now, tomorrow is Thursday. That's when the pattern confirms out there. What you'd like to see taking place is you'd like to see some kind of bottoming pattern while this TD9 count pattern is forming. Now, I've said pattern a few times out there. Uh, just to deduct uh, something from my pay. Here, if we take a look at the daily time frame chart. What the heck? Why did I go to daily? I thought it was the 30-minute chart. Okay, so sorry about that. Didn't mean to pull that over there. I'm not even sure why that's on the screen, but uh, uh, on a separate screen that I've got. Now, for the intraday standpoint, let's look at a 30-minute time frame chart and see what we've got. And Stevie says we don't have anything. Now, I can draw a number of A to B equals CD patterns here to the downside. Is that enough out there? Maybe it is. Because uh, price is trading above its oscillator and chains up. But there's no profile out here uh, that's acting as support. Resistance areas, that's up at the 1241 level out there. But ENVX, let me come back here. That's a 30-minute chart. 
You got a TD9 count. So let's see if we change this just simply to a different time frame. What's going on, for example, on a 15-minute basis? And then we'll just check out the 65. So the 15 has got a Roach Momentum Indicator bottom. So that's saying this TD9 count bottom could take hold today out here, Jimmy. Let's take a look at a 65-minute chart as well. Kind of three of our shorter term times. Now, there I don't have a bottom signal. The bottom signal, though, would be testing the 1150 year. That's a, a TD9 count breakout level for the 65 minute time frame. Keep your eye on this. I, I don't know which way you're, if you're, if you're, I'm assuming you're not shorting a, a, an $11 stock, but if you're looking for a bottom, keep watching the intraday charts out there along with the daily um, because you're getting that. Uh, buy signal out there now the markets were expecting or anticipating at least a one-day bounce so you you know is that a is that a sympathy bounce I, I don't know the answer to that what i'm most concerned about on these charts here jimmy is that uh, 1203 level on the weekly chart because the price closed below that it's it's a it's telling us it wants lower price of course that td9 count on the daily would have to fail okay enough about uh and Ovix Corp out there. I did hope, do hope that provides you with the information. And uh, Jimmy's got two more requests out here, so let's take those. This next one is a take look at BYON, one of the crowd favorites out there, which is Beyond Meat. And if we take a look at Beyond Meat, what do we have here? Well, what we do have is we have a sell the deep point pattern that formed a couple of days ago. And yesterday, price closed below the bottom of its profile. The bottom of its daily profile for Beyond, Beyond Inc., is uh, 2686. So Beyond Inc. is giving us a change in trend signal as well. Turns out the weekly will go ahead and confirm a TD9 count top if price closes on Friday above 2332. Seems like a likely outcome, but you never know out there. So you're getting a top on the daily, a top on the weekly. That's going to suggest a further pullback or retracement. The next downside target for Beyond is going to be at about 2172. I say about because that's the oscillator and change line. That number is going to change. If price were to close below that oscillator and change line, then we'd be looking to move back likely to the 1543 level, 1543 being its TD9 count breakout area. But we also see wave number seven top inside of Beyond uh, Meef. So you got two different topping patterns. Not that that matters. So you got a top on the daily. You've got a, a top that looks like it's going to go ahead and complete on the uh, or confirm on the weekly time frame. Looks and on the monthly time frame, prices struggled at the top of its monthly profile. So this looks like this also wants to do a retracement. And I hope that that provided you with the information you were looking for. Your third request was to take a look at CWH out there. And CWH right now, testing profile support at 25.15. This is Camping World Holdings out there. As long as that holds, and this has got a TD9 count top, as long as that holds, this either sets up maybe a consolidation with inside profiles. That consolidation would range anywhere from 25.15 up to the 28.05 area. The weekly chart for Camping World does not have a topping pattern. We are trading below last week's low, uh, so that says watch 25.15. Jimmy D, if you get a close below 25.15, odds favor that this is going to pull back to 2080. Now, interestingly enough, there's no oscillator and change line on here for the weekly. So Stevie needs to do that. Let's get the right template installed out here. But we're going to break. So we come back from break. We'll finish taking a look at the weekly time frame chart for CWH. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're looking at the charts here for BYON. I was calling it Beyond Meat. It's not Beyond Meat. Thank you for the uh, wingmen and women inside the Tiger's Den. To correct me, that is the old overstock.com uh, uh, out there. And so just wanted to simply clarify that. We were taking a look at the charts here for CWH as we were going into that breakout there. And I uh, was looking for the uh, weekly oscillator and change. That only comes into play out here, Jimmy, if we were to see two consecutive close below 25.15. That would then say 22.91 or thereabouts would be the target. Now, what you can watch for here is price. Uh, the patterns have worked. With what I'm what I'm saying about that, TD and I count top on the daily. Price pulls back to support. When price is pulling back to support, we look to see if there's any kind of intraday bottoming signals, see if that support is likely to hold. Well, it turns out that on a 30-minute basis, and this is exactly at 10:30, 11:30. Uh, this generated a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom and it confirmed a wave number seven bottom out here. Now, what should unfold, Jimmy, at least intraday, is uh, CWH Camping World should at least rally up towards its oscillator and change line, currently printed at 2571. Now, this is where it gets kind of a little tricky here because this 30 minute profile that is forming right now is above price. And that's a bearish indication. So, Right now, you should at least get a rally up towards 2571. And if it can get above that, then you'd be looking to move to 2603 or 2617 out there. Price gets up to that red oscillator change line and turns back down. Boy, you've got to watch that low. Not just because it could negate a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom on the 30 minute chart, because that could also then lead to a close below the bottom of that profile, 2515. So you have everything in line right now for this area to hold. Now you've got to wait to see what buyers and sellers actually do out there. So I hope that that helps you out, Jimmy D, with those three instruments. If not, just to write back to me, let me know what else you are looking for. Dan wants to take a look at ticker symbol AQST. So let's fire up those charts out here. AQST. Let me make sure I'm on the right page here. Okay, I am good. All right, so AQST happens to be Equestive Therapeutics, Inc. And Equestive Therapeutics, Inc., even though my chart here, I've got a little bit of a delay, uh, it is trading still with inside its profile. So right now, Dano, we've got, I can't say Dano because we actually have a Dano. It's consolidated with inside its profile. That's between the range of 191 support, 208 resistance. We're trading right now at 208. If price closed the day above 208, that's going to give you a change in trend signal out there. Now, no bottom pattern per se, not the type of pattern pattern 
pitter patter, not the type of bo bottom patterns. Well, I guess I can't, really can't say bottom patterns too much out here, but not the type of bottom patterns. I just wanted to prove that I could say it. Um, that is associated with the tools that I use. Doesn't matter. If you close above the top of this daily profile, it's going to signal a change in trend. At the same time, the weekly chart, which did generate a Rosemontum indicator top, found support both at the center of its profile. The center is where both buyers and sellers believe there's fair value with inside that profile, but more importantly, at that green oscillator and change line. So its trend is still to the upside out there. It still isn't a bullish trend. Its overall signal, we'd have to say right now, is more neutral because price found support after after creating that high and with regard to the monthly time frame I just see a sideways move out there so you got a sideways move on the monthly the uh, weekly says I want to go target 228 the daily says I'll let you target 228 but first you've got to prove it by closing above 208 and I prefer it not to be 208 or 209 but it could be out there so that's what I see when I take a look at AQST Dan I hope that that helps you out and as always thanks so much for your request the next request coming in from Kim, who wants to take a look at live cattle. And let's take a look at the current contract. That is the February contract, and that is what we've got up on the screen. The question was, is this a potential long? And the answer is, it most certainly was. So let's come back and take a look at these tools out here. You may want to consider um, uh, uh, utilizing these tools here, Kim. Uh, this would certainly help you or would have identified for you that on December 8th, that's when this generated the bottom signal. That was a Rogemintum indicator bottom was confirmed with that bull sash candle out there. Now, what we can see is there was another Rogemintum indicator bottom that formed out here, and that was on the trading day of November 28th. When that pattern formed, what did price do? It got right up to resistance. That was the bottom of that bullish structured daily profile. So the zone of selling is between, and we know that's resistance, is what between 173.67 and 174.68. Well, now prices run so much, you're so close to that area. If I knew that price could break through some uh, resistance, then I'd say, yeah, go ahead and take a uh, long. But I don't know that. Now, maybe you know that. Uh, maybe you know that because of some fundamental things that are out there. But technically speaking, trading at 170.85 right now, knowing that you've got clear resistance at 173.65, I don't see it. Buy it on a pullback, a pullback to where? Maybe that oscillator and change line. Right now, print at 167.30. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, why did the rally yesterday stop where it did? Turns out that on the weekly time frame chart, Kim, this formed a TD9 count bottom. It completed that pattern on the candle following bar number nine. Now we've got a rally. That rally ran right up into resistance at the top of the weekly profile. That's at 172.10. That's another reason for me to say it's definitely a potential long, but you don't want to buy potential longs when they're up at resistance, especially when they're resistance levels that have held out there. So it is absolutely a potential long. What are you going to do? I think you wait for some type of retracement. Now, if we look at some intraday charts out here, let's start with a 30-minute time frame chart, see if there's any signals here for live cattle. And the answer is, geez, none that I see. So let's go from the 30-minute. Let's go down to a 60-minute time frame. Now, somebody out there might say, well, wait a minute, Steve. But you used 65 on that other chart. That was because it was an instrument that traded between 9.30 and 4. So we take a look. at. I'd like to have equal time-framed bars out there. Uh, not, you know, and if you use 60 minutes, it's, it's not going to work. But if you use 65, it will. But on the equity future contract where we're trading, not all, but, you know, almost around the clock out there, here I use the 60-minute time frame. And so after that whole long dissertation, do I have any kind of a topping pattern or bottoming pattern? I don't. I do have a price trading below profile, so that's somewhat helpful. What other time frame can we use out here? Let's use a two-hour time frame chart, see what kind of signals we get out there. And at this stage here... I don't have anything here to help you with. So right now at this stage, I've got to say, let's just refocus on the daily and the weekly time frame signals. They've given you the information that you need. There's definitely bottoms both on both the patterns out there. It just price as a found resistance where it should have, where the sellers were located. And now you've got to wait for some type of a retracement. And uh, I don't know if we'll get back to 167 and change out there, but that would be an area for you to take a look at. Even on the monthly time frame chart out here, price pulled back, tested and found support at its breakout level at 164.65. So it does look like live cattle wants higher price. The question is, 
when to get in. And at least now, you know the resistance series. And again, you really need to see a daily close, unless new profile forms, above 174.68 to suggest that this really has changed its trend. And on the weekly time frame, the close needs to be above that oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 175.33. You do that, and then you've got a weekly or an intermediate term time frame change in trend chart out there. So we're about to go to breakout here. I've gotten through all of the questions that I'm familiar with. So let's go take a look at the intraday charts out here for the ES and the NQ. We get back from this breakout there again. We're expecting or anticipating that a bottom forms today and we get at least a one day rally. But there's a couple things that we're taking a look at to help us prove that. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Welcome back, folks. Let's go out to Miami, Florida, and speak with Lori. Lori, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you this morning? I'm doing all right. How are Excellent. you this morning? And Happy New Year to you and all your loved ones. Oh, I'm thank you. About wheat. W E A T. Um, I own a thousand shares of it. Bought it at right around six, and it's come down a little bit. And I'm wondering um, what your advice would be about that. 
Okay, so if I take a so the, I, what I didn't have enough time to do because because you're calling in so late towards the show was just make sure right. and confirm that the three future contracts that make up the WEAT ETF are the May 2024 contract, the July 2024 contract, and the December 2024 contract. I believe that it is. And if I take a look at those three contracts, we have those up on our screen. We can see that price is trading below support and support being the bottom of their daily profiles. And that is for each of them. When you trade below the bottom of profile, odds favor that you're going to head lower. There are some swing points that, uh, the, for example, the July 24th contract is trading into a swing point. And if it did close today below 621.25, that's your signal it wants lower price. The May 2024 contract only needs to close below 613.75. We're trading below that right now. And in the case of the December 2024 contract, it would be a close today below 647.50. That would suggest lower price. If you get that, uh, if you can follow those future contracts out there, what I would probably do is I would jettison the position. And I would just take a small little loss. You say it's trading around 575. You got about a thousand shares, so it's 25 bucks, 250. Because this thing could move all the way back to its most recent lows back in November out there. So that's what I see, Lori, at this short brief. You know, I'm not looking at intraday charts or anything like that right now. But the dailies right now are giving us enough information that it looks like wheat itself wants to continue to trade lower. I hope that helps you out. I wish I had a better New Year's message much. for you. I really but, uh, appreciate your help today. You, you have bet. you and your loved ones have a happy New Year. Thank you. You too, and thanks so much for calling. Thanks. Folks, stay tuned for all the great programming. I'll be back with you tomorrow on Terrific Thursday. Please have a wonderful Wednesday. Be safe out there. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs>